Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Vaibhav Thakkar, I am the Associate Professor in HOD Department of Public Health Dentistry at MGM Dental College and Hospital, Navi Mumbai. Today, I am going to discuss with you how to write a research protocol. Now, firstly, before we go to the steps of writing a research protocol, I would like to talk a little bit about how do you select a research topic. Now, there are many factors that will determine how you will decide which topic you are going to do the research on. So, firstly, we need to do some background uh, search, like what is the exactly the topic that we are looking for. The topic should not be very broad. We should know all the requirements. It should be relevant to the field of our study. It should align with the current trends and hot topics. And it should also aim to solve a genuine contextual problem in mind. Again, it should be a topic that a research can be done upon. We have to keep the page or word limit in mind before we start selecting the topic. It should spark our interest first of all and should be relevant to the supervisor's field of study as well and should not cause issues in data collection. The data collection should be easily manageable and we have to check availability of the existing data collecting tools with us. Now choosing an interesting research topic becomes the first and foremost challenge and remember no heroic attempt should be made. We have to try and look for a protocol uh, or a research topic on which we can definitely go ahead and do with the resources available with us. And again that the topic that we choose, we should be interested in it because it is more relevant if only we care about our topic. And remember nothing is interesting if we are not interested in it. Now we have to narrow our topic to something manageable because if it is very broad, we will find too much information about it and will not be able to focus on the specific problem area. And background reading can help us to choose and limit the scope of our topic. We have to review the guidelines and policies of the institute or the university which we are a part of and try to follow the protocols uh, set by them. Discussed with our guide, mentor as well as teachers. And another foremost uh, thing that I would like to mention is discuss the topic with your seniors as they can also give us separate idea about their research topic. And definitely you have to read a lot about the topic that you are going to select. Refer as many notes as possible, required text. Refresh your knowledge and refer to the journals, old as well as the new articles and an effective scientific literature search should be done. Talk about research idea with your friends. They may be able to help you focus on our topic by discussing issues that did not occur to us at first. And most of the times I would recommend uh, go outside your field. Like if your area of interest is something in dentistry, talk to somebody who is not involved in dentistry because they might give some angle that we might miss in considering during consider, uh, doing the research. Think of the w, uh, all the W questions that is who, what, when, where and why questions when you are trying to select the topic. So these questions uh, will help us to determine why we are choosing the topic who are the information provider, who may publish the information, who is affected by the topic, what are the major questions uh, about the topic, where is the topic important, whether it's uh, important at local level, national level or at international level and when is our topic important, whether it is a current event or an historical issue. Now coming to the main core of this uh, presentation today that is writing a research protocol. So see this man, this is how your uh, protocol writing should be. Like, you know, uh, it should be meticulous. You should have plan A, plan B, as well as see all the possibilities that are possible, uh, that are, that can come. And then you have to plan your research study. Now, what is protocol exactly if I ask you? So you may say protocol may be a set of rules. Yes, they may be guidelines. They may be blueprint or a plan or it is only a document which is required before we start our study. So research protocol basically will list you who is uh, going to be studied, what we are going to study, when it is going to happen, the setting that is where exactly, why we are doing that study and how we are going to do the research. So the primary requisites of a research protocol is there should be novelty or significance of the research should be there. Like why we should do this study, is there any requirement? The methods and techniques, how it will be performed should be mentioned clearly in the protocol and explanation of the research pro proposal as in what will be achieved after the research is completed. Now, why do you feel that you want to write it? So I would recommend writing it because writing usually helps to organize our thoughts. We ensure that we have not overlooked any components of the research project. We specify the responsibilities of each team member 
regulatory purposes the protocol is required if you are applying for funding or you are applying for any ethical committee approval in that case you need a written protocol and it also becomes a basis for writing the dissertation or the publication that you will plan in the future after completing your research again there are few to uh, points which i would like to discuss why it is necessary to write it because it will help you to clarify the research question it will help you to compile all the existing knowledge regarding any topic it will help us to formulate a hypothesis and objectives it will also decide about the study design it will clarify the ethical considerations and as i mentioned earlier it can help you in apply for funding and it basically the protocol works as a guideline and a tool for the research team to follow throughout the research now what exactly is a research protocol so it's basically a document that describes the objectives design methodology statistical consideration and organization of a research project now what are the contents of a research protocol so uh, uh, the contents may vary according to the components and context of the study under consideration but there are some principal components or what i would like to call the backbone of the research protocol so we need to follow that components properly so these are the components it will first have the introduction or rationale of the study the objectives and the hypothesis methodology your plan of analysis that is your statistical analysis the timeline your study will be following ethical considerations of the study the budget and the bibliography and the annexures so coming to the title page remember your title will be proposed till the time it is not approved by the ethical committee so the proposed title of the project should be accurate short and concise your title page should also have the version number of your protocol and the date and name of investigators including all the principal and the co-collaborators and do mention the designation department institution and contact details now the title of the study will summarize the main idea or the ideas of your research a good title contains the fewest possible words needed to adequately describe the content and or purpose of your research paper now what are the contents of an effective title it should indicate accurately the subject and scope of the study avoid using abbreviations in your title use words that create a positive impression and stimulate the reader interest use current nomenclature from the field of study key variables that is both dependent and independent should be mentioned in the title and suggest a relationship between the variables which supports the major hypothesis and remember it should be limited to 10 to 15 words and use correct grammar and there should be capitalization with all first words now this title will be followed by a confidentiality statement the signatures of all the stakeholders table of contents with page numbers list of abbreviations that will be used in the research study compliance statements and a short abstract or synopsis of 500 words to begin with now coming to the contents of the research protocol so remember there are eight contents starting with the introduction background hypothesis aim and objectives review of literature material and methods data management and statistical analysis ethical and administrative matters bibliography and annexures so in the part 1 of this presentation i'll be covering till the material and methods and in the part 2 of the protocol we'll be taking the remaining four contents so coming to the background or the introduction of the research protocol now it varies with the research problem and the types of research few essential elements are you need to mention what is the current magnitude of the problem how it is what is the current existing uh, situation of the problem under consideration any statistical data any epidemiological data present that can be mentioned and why it is important to address this problem what will be the benefit once we are taking up this research project whether any work has been done on earlier and what were their findings and what are the deficiencies which are still persisting because of which we are conducting this study next is hypothesis and objectives now this is very important part of your research protocol now wh what do you intend to find out will become your research question i have given your example like is the reduction in plaque or calculus formation better with xyz than with chlorhexidine which is the gold standard now your xyz is my experimental device or the experimental pro uh, product which i want to conduct the study on second example is is the healing of intraoral ulcers better with gel abc than with lidocaine gel now again your lidocaine gel becomes my gold standard and gel abc is the research uh, proto the product or the innovative product that i want to do the study on coming to the hypothesis now for the first question research question in mind if i want to formulate a hypothesis the hypothesis will be the reduction in plaque or calculus formation is better with xyz than with chlorhexidine 
now again remember there is a true hypothesis or the alter and uh, null hypothesis so your null hypothesis will always be the one which you will reject and true hypothesis will be the one which you will accept depending on your statistical analysis and objective if i want to write for this uh, study i would write to determine whether reduction in plaque or calculus formation is better with xyz than with chlorhexidine now remember your research objective should follow the smart uh, methodology that is it should be specific it should be measurable it should be achievable relevant and time based now there are two types of objectives primary objectives and secondary objectives so primary objectives of your research study must be achieved it dictates and design and methods and one or more secondary objectives may be there which are supplementary which may not be a main focus of your study but then it may be one of the findings that will support your research like for example xyz uh, not only reduces plaque but also reduces halitosis along with plaque formation so that can be one of the secondary objective next part is the review of literature so pre existing literature related to the research question should be uh, referred short summary of the article should be meant, uh, mentioned in the protocol and year wise you should usually begin with the oldest first and latest in the end the author names and year of publication should be mentioned in the beginning before you give the summary of the articles coming to the main uh, part of the protocol that is your materials and methods or as also known as methodology now this will have different sections it will have study design it will have study setting your sample size for the study inclusion and exclusion criteria expected study duration with timeline examiner calibration the validity and reliability of the questionnaire the data collection method what are the armamentarium required and finally the budget so when you are st uh, seeing the study design or you are describing the study design describe whether it is a survey or experiment what type of survey it is whether it is retrospective cross sectional or prospective study whether it is blinded or not if yes then open or double blind single blind triple blind then whether it is a randomized or a non randomized trial controlled or uncontrolled or it is within patient crossover or parallel so these are different types of study design that will be mentioned so depending on what study design you are following you need to mention it very clearly in your protocol now study setting is usually the place where you will be conducting your study and mention where and under which settings it will be conducted the environment the type of infrastructure like few of the example of the study settings are community clinic old age home academic hospitals or it can be even factory uh, settings where it can be uh, industrial area or any other school can be a part of your study setting now coming to the sample size so what exactly is the sample size now when i want to do the study i cannot do the study on the entire population because of the budgetary constraints or time constraints and the resources which are available so we usually do a study on the representative of the population and that representative is known as the sample so as you can see in the diagram i cannot do the study on the entire population so i only select the sample and i do the study on them so what will be the number of people that will be included in my study and what was the sampling method that i'll adopt and how the sample size has been estimated with the help of a formula that you have to mention in your protocol next is the inclusion criteria so what are the inclusion criteria that will be considered in your study that you have to mention and the exclusion criteria also if there are any concurrent illness concomitant therapy contraindications pregnancy lactation any other medical history or usually somebody who is not willing to participate or follow up should be excluded from the study and that you have to mention very clearly in the study protocol avoid the use of word normal when you are mentioning inclusion or exclusion criteria because we have to define the characteristic very properly with the values like what value will be considered in my study and what value will not be considered in my study like there are some dilemmas that i would like to present like suppose your inclusion study says subject must be greater than 18 years old and you come across a subject who is 17 years and 11 months old do not include them in your study because you had mentioned very clearly in your protocol that you will only include subjects above 18 years of age another example is if you are doing screening for hemoglobin and you want to include patients only with hemoglobin 10 or above and if you come across somebody with hemoglobin level 9.9 kindly exclude them from the study as we have to stick to the protocol what we had mentioned 
after inclusion what next so now once you have done the sample size estimation you have met the criteria of the inclusions so next is treatment allocations so usually when there are two groups you'll use any method used to generate the allocation schedule which group will the participant go into and there should be a method of allocation concealment none of the participants or the researcher should know which group a person is getting or which group they are falling into so you need to mention the randomization details for treatment allocation and in the method there are different methods like coin toss lottery method random number table or computer generated randomization can also be used and allocation concealment can be done by using sealed envelopes or maybe pre number or uh, pre coded containers can be used and it can also be centralized now follow ups if any in your study they should be mentioned when it will be done and what will be measured in those follow ups uh, in the study history examination investigations who will measure it how it will be measured and check on the compliance now coming to the data collection so how will you measure the outcome the change in patient uh, or in vitro characteristics so sometimes it may be symptoms or signs you have you will be checking and sometimes you'll be doing investigations now there are different methods for data collection if it's a questionnaire you can conduct an interview individual face to face or it can also be telephonic you can mail the survey questionnaire to the people it can be administered in a group or these days what is preferred by people is the electronic survey that is you would send it through email online or google forms and again there are some uh, techniques like uh, focus group discussions through which also you can collect the data now data once the data has been collected you should know how you are going to measure that data so which technique will be used and the validity and reliability of the data measurement should also be done now mentioning the armamentarium whatever armamentarium is going to be used in your study you need to enlist them all the machine equipments with the company details have to be mentioned the instruments that you will be using any equipment like uh, sem lasers any probes are going to be used so mention the uh, company name the version if any is available and any chemicals that you are going to use you need to mention the company through which you are going to procure them and the details of the material and then you need to mention about the gan chart or what is the expected study duration with the timeline so here you need to plan out well if you are going to start any study when you are going to start right from obtaining the approval the data collection time the data entry time statistical analysis period followed by what amount of time you will take for the manuscript preparation and lastly when you are going to send it for publication this entire plan has to be ready before you start the study and lastly before we end today's presentation i would want to describe a budget uh, proposal you need to mention the particular item which you are going to purchase the quantity and the amount and this also you need to get it approved from the uh, ethical or you need to get it approved from the institutional research recognition committee or the ethical committee and then only you should proceed so that's it i'll end for this presentation in the next presentation we'll be taking ahead the four other parts of the research protocol thank you